that shot. Just shooting at it straight on, Peacock. I don't care what you're shooting at, Bill. The law says no guns in town. out-of-control gunslinger. The truth is, Bill Hickok is a righteous man of justice who would much rather avoid a fight than start one. There is some truth to his legend, though. If you dare take on Wild Bill, chances are you'll wind up dead. In the spring of 1861, 24-year-old William Hickok turns up in Rock Creek, Nebraska. A tiny stop on the Pony Express, where Bill works odd jobs, keeps to himself, and stays out of trouble. Horse got my money yet, Duck Bill? Not yet. I told you not to call me that. <laughs> well, you tell him I'm coming back. Until I'm coming back with what's rightfully mine. If you knew what a wholesome disregard I had for liars and rascals, they'd be liable to stay out of my way. I'm coming back, Bill. I'm coming back. The station was owned by a tough local character who had southern sympathies by the name of Dave McCandless. And the Pony Express Company hadn't been paying their rent. Candless was always coming around and harassing the people at the station. So there was animosity between David McCandless and Wild Bill Hickok, and McCandless was a bully. Hickok's dislike for bullies traces back to his youth in Illinois. As a young boy, Hickok grows up with abolitionist parents. His family is part of the Underground Railroad that helps slaves escape to freedom. The Underground Railroad was a network of trails and safe houses that helped people escape from slavery to the north and then on to Canada. It's illegal to do what they were doing, but many would be involved for what they would call higher law, higher calling. Hickok is expected to help despite the risk of being caught by bounty hunters and shot dead. Hey, Pilot, catching up! I'm not 
sense of justice, greatly influenced by his parents, caused him to get into situations where he should always stand up for right. He was a defender of the downtrodden, he was a defender of those who didn't defend himself, and all this added to his fault. The restless Hickok makes his way west and finds work with the Pony Express. The Pony Express is the fastest means of communication in the Old West. A relay set out between different riders to get letters from one of these outposts to the other. So what Pounds ends up doing are setting up relay stations along the way. And it's at one of those relay stations that Wild Bill Hickok, who at this point is not Wild Bill, but Duck Bill, has his first brush with violence and fame. The owners of the Rock Creek Station are in debt to Dave McCandless, and he wants his money, or the deed to the property. We don't have it. He's right, we ain't got it. Horace, there's someone coming. Dave's here. With his son and the Jameses. Ladies, better go to the cellar. Well, that way. It ain't property no more. Well, I guess since you haven't paid, it's mine again. Well, hello, Duck. How about a glass of water? There's no need for that. Mr. McCandless will be leaving soon. We can't pay what we don't have. You'll get your money. When? That's the question. It is not a matter of pride that we do not pay our debts. What is it a matter of? So we have a piece of paper that says this is... I have a piece of paper that says you owe me. Freedom! of the shootout at Rock Creek is who fires first, Wellman or Hickok. We'll never know for sure, but many historians find it hard to believe that Hickok would take the first shot, especially from behind a curtain. It's just not in his character. The more likely scenario is that Wellman takes the first shot, and Hickok being the better shot, prevails. The boy escapes, but two in McCandless's gang are still alive. The Wellmans act out of desperation in the moment. Hickok is determined to see it through to the end. Who started this? Now we gotta finish it. The McCandless incident becomes the story of one man single-handedly taking on an entire gang of ruffians. 
Milo Vigil becomes someone who has not just killed maybe one or two men, but hundreds. This is the moment where the Wild Bill of legend is born. And it is that legend that Hickok will trade on for the rest of his life. Hickok is now branded a gunslinger, a reputation that is undeserved. But to survive the untamed West, it's a reputation he will need to earn. sights that would make the wickedest heart sick. Believe me, for what I say is true. After four years of bloody battles, with over 620,000 casualties and nearly a million more missing in action, the Civil War finally comes to an end. Hickok heads south to Springfield, Missouri, looking for new opportunities. Wild Bill Hickok may be an honorable man with a strong sense of justice, but his clothing choices and hairstyles, facial and otherwise, are kind of hard to defend. One thing we know for sure is that Hickok likes to be noticed, and the way he looks makes sure he will be. Bill Hickok was so pretty, it hurts. He was a very compassionate man. He was a decent man. His eyes would reflect that compassion. But if you ever challenged him, he could stare down a rattlesnake. In July of 1865, Hickok takes a seat at a table with Davis Tut. Room for one more, fellas. A former Confederate soldier turned professional gambler. All right. Tut has a reputation as a bully and is quick to violence. What if I take that seat? I need to see what comes in off the street. Legend has it Wild Bill Hickok always sits with his back to the wall. This part of his legend is 100% true. Maybe he's had one too many challenges to his manhood. Maybe it's just common sense. But Hickok almost always insists on a seat facing the door. Whether it's empty or not. The old man. Hickok is a Union soldier socializing with Confederates just weeks after the Civil War ends. Loyalties run deep and tensions run high, even over a card game. Let's deal with our hand. Come on. Another drink. Don't be stingy. You guys have a course. Three fifty more. Oh, 
Good to see you, rich man. That's a little more so. Feeling pretty confident, huh, Dave? Let's see. You got aces. Looks like you owe me 35, Bill. I believe it's 25. You like this pack? You owe me 45 now. Gentlemen. It was a matter of some pride that Hickok was good for his debt. He didn't need to leave any collateral, and so it was just persistent. That he wanted Bill's watch, and he took Bill's watch. This infuriated Hickok. He warns Tut he does not want to see him walking around with that watch. So what does Tut do the next day? He walks around with the watch. What happens next has been the basis for countless legends about Old West gunfights. Cross that square with my watch. Cross that square with my watch. Satisfied? We can have more dead men today. This isn't colonial America. Most gunfights in the real West are not face-to-face -face showdowns in the street. They're more often dirty, opportunistic executions. Hickok's shootout with Dave Tut becomes so famous that it takes on a life of its own. Wild Bill. Wild Bill. Guns down in a shooting. When the newspapers publish stories on the shootout, it's the first time the name Wild Bill is used in print. Street shooting. Guns down. For a nation that's just come out of a civil war in which 600,000 have died, there's a hunger, a thirst for action stories and tales about Wild Bill Hickok. Feed that appetite. <laughs> He's charged with manslaughter. You're fine in there, Bill. I'm fine, Sheriff. He drew first. It was a clean shooting. Hickok is acquitted, and once out of jail, he looks to get back on the right side of the law. 
reputation for gunslinging is currency in the West, and Bill is quick to cash in. Hickok lands a job as a federal detective, tracking down stolen horses and counterfeiters. Then in February of 1867, an interview he gives with journalist George Nichols is published in Harper's New Monthly Magazine. The article is full of exaggerated claims, and Wild Bill becomes a national hero overnight. Damn, you Nichols. Twisted it all up. Harper's Weekly was essentially the uh, the internet of the West. I mean, everyone read it. It was everywhere, and it was the news. It's not only have a story about yourself in there, but illustrations that made you look much more dramatic than you really were. It was fantastic for Hickok, uh, professionally. With his fame growing daily, Wild Bill Hickok is elected marshal of a booming rail town. Congratulations, Mr. Hickok. You're now a duly elected official of Hay City, Kansas. The event marks the first step in his career as a celebrity lawman. But Hickok's newfound fame is both a benefit and a curse. For some, it commands respect, but it also puts a target on his back. Case City was uh, a hotbed of youthful indiscretion. It was a cattle town railhead. Uh, you had a lot of guys coming there to spend their money. You don't know what a country this is for drinking and fighting. No common law here now, hardly at all. A man can do what he pleases without fear of the law or anything. It's it was fairly lawless until uh, uh, Hickok came around. Once you acquire this this international fame, which he did, of being the quickest shot, you know, in the West, you're going to get some jerk who wants to make a name for himself by taking you down. In July of 1870, while Hayes City entertains the Seventh Cavalry, Hickok's reputation creates resentment among the troops. The brash young soldiers under General Custer's command size up the legendary gunslinger. Look who it is. Look. Wild Bill. Alright, All right, we can take him. Clear to every witness in that bar, Wild Bill Hickok acted in self-defense. 
he's well within his rights to defend himself. The problem is those witnesses are nearly all soldiers, just like the man he just shot. Hickok spends the night in a nearby cemetery, literally waiting for the cavalry to come for him. But they never do, more than likely because of his reputation as a gunman. Wild Bill is never charged in the shooting. But Hay City is no longer safe. He's forced to move on to a place where his reputation as a gunslinging lawman will find him work. Abilene, Kansas. Abilene had a reputation as being the roughest of all the cattle towns. It was in the trail for the herds coming north from Texas. Everyone's fueled on alcohol, of course, and somebody has to keep the peace. And that's Wild Bill Hickok. So this is an interesting moment in American history where a burgeoning society recognizes that it needs to remove the unsavory elements. But how do you do that? Well, you need to find someone who has one foot in both worlds, who can travel in both circles. Now, Wild Bill has the chance to secure his legend as a star lawman. Not tonight, Tiffany. In one of the wildest towns in the Wild West. Oh, Who are you talking to him for? Barmaid. Drink for my deputy, please. So this is a man who enjoyed a good drink, who enjoyed a hand of cards, and enjoyed the company of a certain type of woman. It is impossible to separate the Civil War from the real West. After the war, former soldiers from both sides head west to frontier towns with few laws and lots of guns. It is a highly volatile situation with great potential for violence. <laughs> Ooh, you're something else. How am I? You are. Hickok's most dangerous critic in Abilene is a former Confederate soldier named Phil Coe. Rumor has it Co and Bill fell out over a prostitute. Why are you looking at Bill instead of me? I'm right here. Uh, right here. <laughs> wow, Bill Hickok is blessing oh, us Bill. with his presence. Yeah. <laughs> We glad when cattle season's over. Yep. Haven't seen my wife in four months. In a few weeks, I reckon, and these Texans will all be heading back south. Hickok and his part-time deputy, Mike Williams, have weathered a rowdy cattle season. They've been keeping the peace for months and have become close friends. his own special deputy, Mike Williams. It is the moment the legend of Wild Bill and the real man went crashing down. Who fired that shot? Wild Bill Hickok is a legend in his own lifetime. 
A reputation as a lawman and gunslinger puts the target on his back. But living under a constant threat has given him a hard edge. And a hair trigger. This is the beginning of the end for Hickok. He will never hold a position as a lawman again. He never forgives himself for the fatal mistake. Like, I hold no intercourse with the world around. Everything looks dark about me. Hickok pays for his friend's funeral in Kansas City and then loses himself within the saloons and gambling halls of the big cities. He wanders from town to town, hoping to distance himself from his memories and leave his past behind. You want to deal me in there, fellas? Who's money first? Show you my money. There's my money. I haven't seen the wife in four months. across the west for a better part of a year. He's drunk most of the time and completely broke. Until his old friend Buffalo Bill Cody offers him a job. How you doing, Bill? Buffalo Bill Cody and Wild Bill Hickok had known one another for a long time. He knew about the Wild West and convinced Hickok that we had to share this with a new generation of people who didn't know the Wild West as they did. And Cody invites him to be a part of this Wild West show. Let's just get this over with. I feel ridiculous. Okay, now easy now. Oh, okay. Go along. There you go, you can make it. <laughs> He plays a parody of himself, far removed from the western frontier. This will take just a moment. Look, my eyesight's bad enough as it is. Can you turn down the damn lights you got over there? No, you see that light right there! That one! Ah! Ah! All right, now. I'm sorry, ladies. of the spotlight proves too much and he heads west again in search of redemption in the black hills of dakota territory where a new vein of gold has been found hiccup joins thousands of fortune hunters flooding the boom town of deadwood i don't think you could have found any place more vile than Deadwood, South Dakota. It just was a place that um, had no law. You had people stealing from one another. You had people jumping one another. There are people that are being killed in a very violent way. We had all of this going on, and in this scene, you find Waldo Hickok. You're called. The legendary town tamer falls back into his old habits, drinking and gambling his time away. Yeah. I think I'm raised. Call. I have a hunch that I'm in my final camp, and I'll never make it out of this gulch alive. Something tells me that my time is up, and where it's coming from. 
I do not know. Then, while Bill Hickok and Jack McCall were gambling one night, he was a, a drifter, a ne'er-do-well, a loser. The guy's got a chip on his shoulder of some kind. Hey, you feel, kid? All in. There's some odd love. Oh. You say, kid? McCall is just a punk looking for a way to start a fight with Walpo Hickok. And that's precisely what he does. August 1st, 1876. Wild Bill wins hand after hand against Drifter Jack McCall. Get some rest, take it easy. Here, have some breakfast on me. McCall's offended that Hickok has given him money to go and get something to eat and to calm down, but McCall isn't having any of it. <laughs> the next day, Wild Bill arrives late to the number 10 saloon, only to find his favorite seat facing the door is already taken. Charlie, mind if I have that seat so I can see the door? Come on, roll, Bill. All right, fellas, deal me in. And there was certainly a moment in Wild Bill's life when he would have been given anything he wanted. That bar would have parked. It's like the Red Sea before him. But it's pretty clear by this point, Wild Bill was not the man he once was. At 39 years old, Hickok is no longer a lawman. He's simply a drifter, a gambler, and an aging gunslinger with a violent history. And his past is closing in behind him. is a drunk. He's somebody who's looking for a way of fast fame. McCall comes in and before Hickok knows it, takes his gun and shoots him in the back of the head. Hickok, face down, on the table, and is dead. Jack McCall is later convicted of murder and hangs for his crime. No motive is ever revealed. Hickok dies with aces and eights in his hand, 
That hand becomes a powerful symbol in Western literature and film that writers and filmmakers use to signal that death is at hand. Unable to outrun his reputation, the gunslinger never gets the chance to face his killer. He's buried in Deadwood's original cemetery under the inscription, Wild Bill, killed by the assassin Jack McCall. The legend of Wild Bill Hickok is full of lies, spread by the dime novels, newspapers, and magazines of the day. Today, that legend of an untamed, indiscriminating gunman persists. But the truth of Hickok's life is far less sensational. He's a man driven by justice, scarred by a mistake that haunts him as he searches for the redemption he will never find. Even in death, Wild Bill Hickok adds to his legend. With one last tale, this time a true one, to enhance his legacy of the real West.